Hi, David and Steve. Thank you for joining us today. Could you please introduce yourselves and uh, Cloud Trade? David, would you like to go first? Yeah, of course I will. Yeah. Hi, I'm I'm David Cox. I'm co-founder of Cloud Trade. We founded Cloud Trade in 2009. Uh, there were three of us at the time. Steve joined a bit later. The two original founders, Richard Devlin and Richard Manson, and myself, were we're all still in the business. Um, we saw a clear gap in the market uh, where the tech industry was really not providing the solution that people wanted to the capture of documents. So we set out to build tech and the company that would truly automate the capture of human readable documents and allow the ingest into computer into the downstream computer system of trusted data, which would then facilitate further automation downstream. Um, we've run the company as a sort of uh, run the company organically through till 2018, and then we were fortunate to have some EIS investment provided by a private equity house called Capital Calcus Capital in London. Uh, that was in 2018, and we continue to grow. Uh, Steve, do you want to add anything more to that? Really? Absolutely, I'll just introduce myself. So Steve Britton, Director of Sales for CloudTrade, covering the uh, EMEA and Asia-Pac region. As David mentioned, um, I, I joined full-time in 2017, but uh, um, uh, having known David for some time and one of the other founders, Richard Manson, um, from the early 2000s, really, um, when the concept of CloudTrade was put together in 2008, um, I was extremely excited. Um, I've been selling various solutions and outsourcing models um, to the global market for uh, probably about 20 odd years. And the ability to demonstrate to clients that you can deliver 100% data accuracy and trusted data, as David mentioned, um, has been um, the, the something that's been out of reach for the industry for many years. And when David and Richard mentioned to me that they created this company and the tech to provide just that, uh, I was extremely excited and very eager to join the business. Thank you. That's brilliant. Uh, so we've t t touched about uh, cloud trade and the overview of the company. And next question is more detailed into the company itself. And so what's the impact of the economic slump on electronic data exchange? Uh, probably if I well, could kick off. Um, go on, Steve, yeah. Yeah, so interestingly, uh, you know, we all, uh, when the pandemic hit, wondered what was going to happen to the world economy. Uh, we've all seen uh, the output, but from CloudTrace point of view, um, interestingly, we got a surge of demand because we provide a digital platform. And what happened globally was mail rooms were compromised. You know, people weren't in the office um, and therefore the mail coming in wasn't being opened and people had to move to a different media. Uh, and that was, um, you know, email because it's pervasive. Um, and for us, where we're processing inbound um, invoices uh, from suppliers or inbound orders from customers, um, it's natural for them to submit those documents via email. Um, they come into cloud trade and uh, we're able to uh, process them. So suddenly, you know, organizations had to keep trading, they had to keep paying the bills um, and processing their customer orders. So it was a natural migration to come over to cloud trade. So from that point of view, um, it was, um, you know, a, a good benefit to the company. Um, and we're seeing now that the world actually has changed. You know, you get uh, world events that really do um, make a, an impact. And for many years, we've been saying in the industry, paper is going to diminish and be removed from the um, transactions. It has been prevalent for a long time, but in the last 12, 18 months, we've seen a dramatic change and people won't go back to sending paper. They'll keep, you know, continuing with that digital agenda. So yeah, David, I don't know if you want to add anything to yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think that's right, Steve. I mean, obviously, you know, some businesses went to the wall. We had a few businesses who worked in hospitality, you know, that they've taken, they've, you know, who would want to have worked in hospitality in 2020? You know, it was really rough for them. Yeah. We also saw um, some businesses pulling back on decision making. So that was mainly around the new sales uh, new projects people did delay some decision making where they I mean pro well, got, I think just the organizational ability to make decisions um but as Steve said there's just this massive new awareness in business 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 uh, resilience and uh, uh, you know where businesses that had those processes and people put their business processes linked to the physical pro physical um, location of the people or the equipment 
they realized the need to break those links and that was just you know, get, get 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 your businesses get get your businesses processes delinked from premises and because that was the only way you're going to give uh, you know get true resilience in, into your business so overall good yeah, and I think, you know, as I mentioned before about um, the, the removal of paper, the digital agenda has been on most CFOs agenda for, for a long time, um, but it's, it's it's very hard sometimes to change historical business practices. Um, but, you know, as I said, with, with the event like the pandemic hitting, people had no choice but uh, to submit and process digital documents. Thank you. That's brilliant. So we touched on the different industries and uh, uh, are there any particular advantages of e-invoicing and uh, where do you expect to, uh, would, you, would you have to expect restrictions on those? David, do you want to that I'll start, yeah, I mean, I think this is the obvious, you know, the, the blindingly obvious, you know, speed, accuracy, audibility, costs, you know, I mean, you know, you don't have to tell people, that, that, that people know, know that now. Um, and that, but the one I often play, uh, talk to people about, it's just the way the modern world is. And if you're not very careful, you can't run a business in the modern world using old, old fashioned technology. Sooner or later, you might get away with it in the short term, but sooner or later, it, you're out of date and somebody will over, overtake you. Um, there has been a historical nervousness about regulations. Uh, but I think that's a thing of the past. You know, there was an awful lot of confusing messages coming out, particularly out of the EU. I think the EU got itself in a real knot about it. But I think that that we 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 pass we pass that now. Um, there's still a little bit of legacy of over-engineering in the tech. Um, uh, you see a lot of you see an awful lot of very complicated stuff coming out, things making things more complex than they need to be. Um, Electronic to me, mind you, and that's an interesting thing. How do you define electronic? <laughs> electronic to me Absolutely. means just not paper, <laughs> not yes. paper. You know who, you know who is going to send business documents by paper in the year two thousand and twenty-one? You know that's kind of you know you just got to think about that really. So, Steve, you want any more of that? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I, you're right, David, in terms of the definition, a lot of people see um, e-invoicing as, um, you know, computer to computer, peer to peer um, transactions, which takes time and effort to set up. And there are many um, platforms, portals around the world that um, enable buyers and suppliers to transact, but they take an effort um, quite often um, an IT project to set them up and to maintain them uh, and David mentioned the cost element you know from CloudTrace point of view not only do we have the great tech that you know I still believe globally is unique and it's a, a approach um, but we remove the barriers that are typically there for a sending party you know from our model is we don't charge the sending party the model is there's no significant change to the way they're operating today you know they're creating an invoice in their application and it simply gets emailed and CloudTrade pick it up we do the conversion and we submit the data in the format that the receiving organization requires to enable it to be automated uh, and that's a huge benefit you know very often we get engaged in conversations where um you know, we talked about the change and people will produce an invoice and we often hear well what i do with it is i print it and i then scan it and i then email it well you don't need to do those steps and when we explain you know with us there's no printing there's no stationary there's no scanning you simply take the application you've created in whatever billing application you've got and you submit it um, and as I say, in CloudTrade then deals with the rest. And, uh, you know, David talked about compliance and integrity. Well, you know, with an email, you've got an audit trail with, with our service. We understand the business rules and the business logic required by the receiving organization. And we deliver the data in that format. Um, so, you know, from um, a trusted point of view, you've got the data um, accuracy and you've got the data integrity that a CFO needs you know if a cfo is signing off at their book their books of records um, they need to close their accounts within a certain counting period you know with cloud trade service they know they've got the confidence the data that's been presented a in a timely manner and secondly that it's correct and accurate thank you that's amazing so we touched on legacy technology that's outdated in 2021 and uh, electronic invoicing in currently happening and my next question is to more towards more future Realistic looking, uh, which is can machine learning automate an accounts payable process? 
I think you've got to be a little bit realistic. I guess that's 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 all about the limitations. You know, the, you know, we're definitely in the in the hype cycle on machine learning. We, you know, we all use it for face recognition at the airports, or we did when we used to fly on aeroplanes. You know? <laughs> uh, but uh, and machine learning to me today in 2021 it means means neural networks, which neural networks are all about having systems, computer systems that learn from historical examples. So you throw enough historical examples at, at a machine learning, at a neural network, and, and through mathematical algorithms, it learns the, pat, the pattern match. It's a pattern matching system. Um, this is not a, what we'd call a deductive reasoning system. Um, it, you, uh, it's not about how the answer is. You don't, you're not sure how the answer is achieved. Um, even if the logic is blindingly obvious, to you, you can't say how the neural, the neural network may, in fact, not even get the right answer. And there's no way in a pure neural network of instructing it with logic. You instruct it by, by examples. And we, so we see machine learning as a component of a solution, almost an advisor. You know, we've all read in the newspapers, I'm sure, how machine learning AI, they, you know, they're all used interchangeably in these terms, AI, AI, is you know, the reticence or the concern of using it in a military environment where decisions get could get made, life and death decisions in a military environment, and you couldn't audit why those decisions have been made. So we very much see machine learning as an advisor, but not as the final arbiter of the decisions. Really? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I was sort of going to expand a little bit in terms of another acronym, which uh, or an acronym that we hear in the market, which is robotic process automation or RPA. You know, does that fit in in the category of machine learning? Um, uh, yes and no. Um, you know, we. Uh, work with a lot of um, RPA um, vendors and, and organizations that have deployed robots who are they're very good in, in certain circumstances. But the, at the end of the day, um, the robot is going to react on data that's provided to it. And if it has incorrect data, then sadly, you've got a dumb robot. So, you know, from CloudTrace point of view, where we have organizations that have RPA deployed, uh, we enhance its capability by providing that level of accurate data. And as David mentioned, you know, for us extracting information, the relevant information of a document, a business document, whatever it may be, it's a logical approach, a logical problem. And, you know, we use a term in cloud trade, if, if our customers can articulate what their business rules and logic are, we can implement it. Uh, and the more complex, the better. Um, and, you know, we utilize machine learning AI within our platform, um, but it's done in a very careful and in controlled manner. Uh, at the end of the day, from our point of view, for our customers, it's delivering the output data that they require as a managed service. Um, you know, a lot of technologies, machine learning, et cetera, as, as David explained, is down to the acquirer of that tech to manage it. Um, and that's a big overhead. And, you know, if you're manufacturing chocolate bars or, or whatever, um, you're not necessarily going to be an expert in, in that area of technology. Um, so, you know, part our approach, our model is, yes, utilizing uh, advanced technology, but also delivering that as a managed service to our customers. Thank you. Uh, so next question is going to more uh, to towards a realistic case study uh, uh, in real world, which is how can e-invoicing help the corporates and mid-sized companies when it comes to payment deadlines? R really, really important subject matter. Um, you know, it, it, certainly in, in the economic climate we're in today, um, cash flow has always been king, um, but it's <laughs> probably a lot more important uh, in today's market. Um, and, you know, for a supplier, looking after your supply chain is, is critically important. And if you've got an SME who is submitting an invoice and they've got to suffer, you know, th 40, 60, 90 day payment terms, and then the payment they get is incorrect or um, halfway through those payment terms, there's a query being raised. Um, it just, you know, it creates a, a major problem for that SME. So having a, a service that can, as we've discussed, can accurately and in a timely manner present an invoice for settlement. It enables the the, um, the buyer to do a number of things. Um, they understand what their liability is and they can manage their cash flow more effectively. They understand the relationship with their supply chain and how it needs to be managed, but also they can take advantage of things like um, settlement discounts. You know, a lot of organizations will offer a discount 2% maybe for payment in 10 days, uh, maybe, you know, a, a larger percentage. But if it takes you 40 days to process your invoice, 
you're not going to take advantage of those settlement discounts. Um, so, you know, again, having an efficient service, um, the buying organisation can take advantage of that. Um, similarly, on, on you know, the other side of the world that we, we work in, which is on processing inbound orders, getting that order processed efficiently. You know, we're all very familiar with the likes of Amazon, you know, same day or next day delivery. Well, that's the same the world over. You know, people who place an order want that order to be processed in an efficient manner. They want their goods or services within the time frame that they expect. So having a, a service that manages those orders to ensure that the delivery is, is done within the time frame is critically important. And we have a lot of customers that not only understand the processing benefits that they receive, but also on the what we call the order to cash side, uh, we can uh, actively help them grow their revenues because, you know, you go to an organization where you're getting the quality of service, you're getting other goods or services in the time frame you want. Um, if there's a technology behind the scenes that improves that, you're going to be more likely to go back and buy there again. So, you know, we found customers have come to us to say, great improvements on my efficiency, but actually you've helped me grow revenue. I think one other thing about uh, you know that we got a good story in, uh, in 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 cloud trade. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's something that I like these sort of one-liners, and it's uh, it says that uh, in 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 the US it's about invoice processing, it's about efficiency. In in the in Europe it's about compliance, and you have and electronic invoicing gives you both actually. It gives you both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's amazing, uh, brilliant. Thank you. Um, and lastly, uh, looking towards the future and what's next for Cloud Trade, David, I'll let I'll let you pick that one okay. up because well, <laughs> one of our pet projects at the I, moment. I, th I think you know the first one is uh, you know that uh, to continue to push this message that we're pushing now for ten years uh, that yeah that um, that electronic trading doesn't have to be complex. I think if ever there's if there's one message I like to take people to think about is that. If you if it all sounds like it's too complicated and therefore I'm just going to continue using my bits of paper or whatever, then it's because they're being told you've been in, incorrectly informed. It doesn't have to be complicated. So I think banging that drum. Mm -hmm. And the second really strategic thing is we we're absolutely aware about all the tax collection initiatives that are going on around the world, particularly you know fighting VAT fraud. Um, so we are we are we are working across the globe to make sure cloud trade is integrated into these initiatives. The interesting thing to me about these initiatives, that you know, South America has led the charge, but we also see it happening in Europe uh, and in Asia. But it's become a country; they become country initiatives. So what Brazil does is different to what Argentina is doing. What France is doing is different to what Germany is doing, but in each country they have the same basic premise that I think if I had to be, had a crystal ball within 10 years, we'll see all VAT type invoices centrally registered. And I think the dream, of course, of governments is then they can reconcile, they can reconcile all VAT movements and the cash collection on those VAT. And we want to be part of that. We want to be part of that story. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, you know, so working collaboratively, collaboratively with our customers, understanding um, you know, any feature or functionality improvements that they may want, and the market changes, as Dave has explained. You know, geographically, uh, different regulations come to bear, uh, and that has an impact on our customers. So we listen very carefully. Um, you know, customer excellence is um, paramount in, in, in cloud trade. You know, we have an excellent retention rate with our customers, ninety-eight percent plus. Um, and we want to continue that and making the service um, as easy as possible to operate and delivering against the required business outcomes is, is our objective. So, you know, we, as we've talked about earlier on, we do have leading edge technology. The market, however, changes, you know, we have a lot of um, technology developments all over the world and we need to keep abreast of that, keep abreast of the changes in the uh, geographic markets that we operate in and make sure that we stay ahead of the curve. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, David.